Hi everyone and welcome to today's daily physics booster, number one in the lovely long series that we're going to have across the exam season. Do note this is an advanced information listed topic, this time it's just listed on the foundation physics lists, but that doesn't mean it can't come up on the higher tier because they do have that lovely line, there is no content that will not be assessed on the paper. What we're going to do then is start off with looking at the atom. So this is the bit that overlaps really nicely with the chemistry, so it's almost a two for one learning opportunity here. We need to know those scientists and what they did in terms of developing the ideas about atomic structure. So to start off with, we have Dalton, and what he did was came up with this theory of the atom being a tiny indestructible sphere. He said all atoms in an element are the same, but atoms in different elements are different. Scientist number two is Thompson. Now, Thompson used those cathode ray experiments, and what he discovered were these cathode rays are actually made from stuff we call electrons. Now, he worked out that those electrons are negative, and so he came up with the plum pudding model to explain this neutral atom. So basically, this positive cloud with these negative electrons scattered through it. Scientist number three worked in conjunction with two others. So we've got Rutherford, who worked with Geiger and Marsden. Now, what they worked out was that some materials emit these positively charged particles, which they refer to as alpha particles. And using those positive alpha particles, he fired them at these very thin sheets of gold foil. If the plum pudding model had been accurate, the alpha particles would have basically passed straight through, but they didn't. Instead, some of them reflected back, they bounced off at different directions, which then did not support the plum pudding model. As a result of that, they came up with the idea that atoms must have a tiny positive nucleus surrounded by electrons, and they described it more like a planetary model. So this positive nucleus with the electrons orbiting kind of like the planet, planets do in our solar system. Next scientist is Ball. And he then did those mathematical models to show that the electrons move in these fixed orbits, which we refer to as electron shells. Hopefully the little diagram at the bottom looks incredibly familiar from our chemistry. So we've got the nucleus, which contains the protons and the neutrons, the electrons then in those orbitals or shells around it. We do need to know the size of an atom. So an atom is about 1 times 10 to the minus 10 metres in diameter. They like that as a multiple choice question. So just one times 10 to the minus 10 is the kind of go-to answer. If they want to know the radius of a nucleus, I think far less likely to come up as a question, but it is still listed, then one times 10 to the minus 15, because obviously the nucleus must be smaller than the atom there. So our next little bit is our first calculation. Do remember this year, you are being given all the physics formulas on that data sheet and they're being ordered by unit as well. So this will be near the very beginning. What we're looking at is density. So density, quite simply, is how much mass there is in a certain volume. And the way we work out is mass in kilograms divided by the volume in meters cubed. Do double check to make sure that they have given you the mass in kilograms and not grams. If it's in grams, obviously divide by a thousand to get the kilograms first. If they ask you how to work out the density of any particular thing, if it's a regular shape, we can just work out the volume using a ruler and an electronic balance to get the mass. If it's an irregular shape, things like stones, lumps of plasticine, whatever, then what we need to do is still use the electronic balance to get the mass, but to get the volume, you use a Eureka can. So this is the little diagram you can see in the bottom right. The Eureka can, quite simply, is, as the name suggests, a can, it's usually metal, with a little spout coming off. So what you do is you fill it right the way up, just above the little spout first of all, then you sit it on a desk and let that water run out until none is coming out. You then place a measuring cylinder under the spout, and then you carefully add your item. What's going to happen is the item then displaces the water of the same volume as itself, and you just read that off the measuring cylinder at the side. The last little bit we're going to consider in today's booster is just looking at the idea of how density changes with different states of matter. 
Hopefully, just through our knowledge of the particle model from chemistry, we know that in a solid we have more particles in any given volume than we do in, say, a gas. And as a result of that, the more particles there are, the greater the mass, and therefore density will increase. So it's that same volume, though. Do remember, you can't just say there are more particles. It's got to be there are more particles in the same volume. OK, so just be that little bit more specific than some of you can be. Do remember that density is going to depend on the arrangement and the mass of the particles, because obviously the more of them you've got packed into that same volume, that will affect. And then also the change in mass of the particles themselves affects the overall mass, too, in that same volume. We do have our law of conservation of mass, just states that because particles are neither created nor destroyed, whatever mass you start with must be the same as the mass we end with. So if we're thinking about anything at all in terms of reactions, whether it be physical changes, chemical changes, the total mass of your reactants must equal the total mass of your products. Otherwise, we've created or destroyed particles, which is impossible. So final thing to do today then is head on over, have a go at our quiz to see how well you've understood these little bits, how well you know this knowledge. And if there are still gaps, you can use the main channel videos, your revision guides, obviously any notes you've got from class, just to make sure you are very confident on these topics. But do remember, you don't have to memorize any of the formulas. They are all given to you. Don't forget to join us tomorrow for our next physics daily booster.